The BMW E39 was BMW's fourth generation mid-sized executive saloon car. Released in 1996 with just two engines available, the 192 brake horsepower 2.8 litre straight six and the nearly 300 brake horsepower 4.4 litre V8. Various other engine configurations were released along the lifetime of the car. The chassis itself is longer, taller, wider, and thanks to all the aluminium suspension components, 70 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. Back in 1996, my grandfather opted for the more economical version of the two at launch, the 528i, and ticked nearly every option box. Back in the day, my grandfather used to swap out his car on some sort of higher purchase scheme for a new 5 series every three years, and he kept this up for about 15 years. As soon as he drove the E39, he deemed it so good he didn't need to buy anything else, and the car stayed. It got passed around various members of the family when he quit driving, before landing itself with me at around 46,000 miles. I used to drive this car all the time, but somehow I just stopped driving. It's been seven months since I've even seen the car. The car's locked in an underground car park in East London. I'm going to go check it out because I need to do a bit of Christmas driving. That's a problem. It's not with the key fob, right? Okay. So this is it. This is my one owner, 60,000 mile BMW E39 that I want to drive up to Oxford. Um, now. Yes. Hello, mate. Do you sell car batteries? I'm after one for a BMW 5 Series. 105 pounds later, the battery has been ordered. I'm driving to Oxford tonight to see my brother and this will be the first time I've driven this car in seven months. Here's a little trick to keep your phone upright. Then you can. Perfect. People think that running a six cylinder BMW in London is expensive, but um, look at the economy, it's not as bad as you think. Full throttle, full throttle, that's 30. Too dangerous in sports mode.
all jokes aside, there are really very few cars I'd rather be in in this situation. The uh, automatic gearbox and the adequate power and the size that's... Well, it, it still looks kind of big on the road, even with the large old fat Ford Mondeos and stuff being about four times the size now. Um, it's just a nice place to be, even if you do get 9.8 miles per gallon. Anyway, onwards. Traffic, traffic, traffic. So I left London at around three o'clock. It's now 4.46, so it's been an hour and 45 minutes. And we are on the A40. I guess in Greater London, maybe. We've gone 15.2 miles. <sighs> 60 more to go. I had to stop on the hard shoulder because my fucking windscreen wipers aren't working. So I'm in the motorway service station, uh, Beaconfield Services. The, the wipers aren't working on the car. There's no rain, it's just they randomly broke. I don't know what's happened to them. It's not really safe to, um, it's not safe to keep driving like this, so I've got to try and figure out what's wrong with it. Um, yeah. Haven't taken the relay out of the car. It looks like this here gets all black and gummed up, so all you got to do is clean these off, put this back together and it should work. Um, here's hoping. See how these things work. It turns out this is always touching and this electromagnet. When electricity comes through here, this gets pulled down onto this and that sends the electricity out of here, which engages the circuit. I'm literally just putting the screwdriver in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's how a relay works. Cool, huh? Right, let's get back in the car. Having got the other one out of the car. That's the situation with the other one here. It is totally jammed up and doesn't move at all. There you go. Oh, I hope that fixes it. Sit wrap.
here.